Corny, and this is part two of our deep dive into some graphic organizers that we can use to organize our thoughts when we're not quite sure on something. You have an initial question, right? Maybe it's what are the key religions of the world? Maybe it's um, classify these pairs of angles. Maybe it's analyze the structure of an atom. Oh my gosh, big thoughts. Then we're going to take what we know. There's some stuff you know. There is knowledge in that brain of yours, and we're going to work toward figuring out where does that knowledge stop? And so where can we figure out where we're stuck so that we can address that spot? And then once we get unstuck, then we'll come back and really tie it all together. Part of this is it's a nice option to be able to use what are called graphic organizers. We looked at a bunch of them in part one. If you have not watched part one, go back and watch part one. Hopefully you watched it. These graphic organizers, we can do some really cool things with them, right? Okay, I'm going to just walk you through some of the ones that I think are going to be the best option for you. And the first is this descriptive bubble, right? Except for a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I've heard it called a mind map. That's just me. Here's a way this could look. I'm thinking that I have a question on analyze the structure of an atom. That's my initial question. So I know that I'm going to take a deep dive into atoms. Okay. What are some things that I know? Well, I know protons. I know neutrons. And I just spelt that wrong. So let me give this another go here. Whoop. Neutrons. And I know electrons. Well, I've got some other spaces. Maybe I want to add in some words about nucleus, or maybe I want to pull in some information that I know about the periodic table. But I'm going to keep going with this idea of electrons, right? Their charge is minus one. And they kind of complement protons. Protons have a charge of plus one. Now I'm organizing all my information into a way I can see it. It's not just jumbled in my brain. I'm making it come alive on this piece of paper, right? Um, speaking of protons, I also know that they determine what the element is. If I have one proton, whoops, the spelling struggle is real this morning. If I have one proton, I know I'm working with hydrogen. If I have eight protons, I'm working with oxygen. If I have ten protons, I'm working with neon. Okay. Oh, something else I know about electrons. They live in the electron cloud. Right? Neutrons, they live in the nucleus. Oh, you know what? Protons live in the nucleus too. And see, I'm starting to organize. This is a great opportunity to get your notes out and really start thinking about what information from your notes and how can I put it into this graphic organizer. So this is just a science example. Mind maps work great for English too and whatnot. So Feel free to use it however, but this is just one graphic organizer that I think might be helpful for you as you start to work through this. Okay, Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, chronological we talked about, right, with how to play Uno. Don't want to take as much time to talk about that one. I want to show you a couple other really great ones that I think might be helpful for you. Compare and contrast bubbles. Fire up. Right, again, we sometimes just love to call these Venn diagrams. A Venn diagram is used when we have two things that we're trying to compare. And we want to know what do they have in common and what are their differences. So let's compare two things. Let's compare complementary angles and supplementary angles. Ooh. Well, complementary and supplementary, they both take two... angles, right? I can't have one complementary angle. It always is a pair, right? It takes a pair of angles. They both rely on knowing the degrees, right? And then it, they both talk about adding the two angles, right? Some, there's some angle plus another angle. Now supplementary, that's 180. Complementary, right? 30 plus 60, equals 90, so 30 and 60 are complementary angles. 100 plus 80 equals 180, so 180 
our supplementary angles. Okay, because of that 180, we've got some connections to a linear pair. But that is in the supplementary side because it doesn't fit in the complementary side. But now I'm going to take what I know about complementary. Well, I've got some connections. Some connections to right angles, right? So remember that this is what they have the same. But then we keep their uniqueness in their own bubble, right? So compare and contrast, so great for when you have two things and you're trying to find out what's the same, what's different, so that I can compare and contrast things. That is such a great way or such a great thing to look for to decide when is a Venn diagram appropriate. As soon as you see compare and contrast, let's get after it. Let's get into that Venn diagram and just go. Okay, I'm going to show you one other one. Look at this cause and effect a little bit. Now, I know you're going to study a lot of things in world history because the world's been around for a while. But I'm going to pick something um, that hopefully you've talked a little bit before. If not, hopefully you've seen Hamilton. Cause and effect surrounding the American Revolution. So immediately, I want to know... What are some causes of the American Revolution, right? Well, no taxation without representation. That was some language that they used, right? There were some issues because of the French and Indian War. There were issues because of other things that Great Britain was doing. What were some of the effects? Well, we formed the Constitution, right? Um, it actually, one of the effects was the French Revolution came a little bit later. And because the French Revolution happened, France was weaker, and we did the Louisiana Purchase. Now, that's an effect that's way down the road, but that's an effect, right? Oh, how about the fact that we had a new country? So... Cause and effect's great for when you've got to brainstorm. How does something cause something to happen, and then what are the results, right? Great for social studies. Great for maybe when you're looking at a character in an English book, right? Maybe an event happens to that character. What caused that event? What were the effects of that event? I think of Frozen and Elsa running away in her ice palace, right? And when she gets in there, that's the event. Why did she run away? What were some of the causes? Well, Anna was going to marry Hans. And Elsa was had to be the queen, but that was overwhelming because the gates were open. That was a stressor. What were some of the effects of her running away? We could just list those off, right? Movies are full of causes and effects. I picked Frozen because I feel like I've watched it a thousand times with Ginny. But you might be able to think of another example. So here's your task. Right? We've looked at what these Venn, what, not Venn diagrams, that was just one of them, what these graphic organizers can do to help us organize our thinking. But now I want you to practice with one. So here's what we're going to do. Coming over here. I'm coming back to my intro TRF document. Whoops. Coming back to my intro TRF document. And you are going to pick one of these to use. Okay? In order to do so, you are going to be, hopefully you're in your document now, and if you look up at the top of these to add your own, this is if you want to make your own, but if you want to use one of the ones below, and that's my challenge to you today, copy the one that best fits your initial question. Now, remember, I said it didn't have to match your initial question because maybe it doesn't quite fit. You could just pick one that you want to experiment with, but you're going to copy and paste it into that box. And then, this is the neat part. If you want to do some editing, you double-click it. Okay? So you are going to grab the one you want with copy and paste, and then paste it in there, and then double-click, right? Tap, tap. 
So that way you can open it in the drawing portion. And when you open it in the drawing portion, then that's going to allow you to change the text. It's going to allow you to change the color. It's going to allow you some opportunity to experiment. Once you finish that, you are going to share it with me. I asked you to share it with me from the get-go, but I'm, if you haven't done that yet, you're going to share your final result with me. Now, remember, I said we're just dipping our toes in the water of a TRF this week. Next week, we're doing the big deep dive, and you're going to be responsible um, for kind of putting one all together from beginning to end, not just piecemealing it like we've done so far. So give this a try. Pick one graphic organizer. If you don't like the one you picked, that's the power of the delete button. Get rid of it. Try a different one. Put something together you're kind of proud of and see what you can really design and how you can use that to create your work. So get after it. Let me know where you are stuck. Let me know how I can help. Communicate so that we can really help you be successful because I want you to do great things and I want to help you do great things. Okay, ready to go?